For X, we do have a couple of trainers uh, and coaches in the audience. I also want to go over, this may not be really uh, important for the athletes here, but uh, another good uh, method when we're kind of going through these drills um, is teaching uh, the athlete from the bottom up versus the top down. So when we're teaching a squat, when we're teaching a push-up, a split squat, all these different movements, it's really nice to use something like a box or the floor and start from the bottom. So when we do some of these drills today, if you want to use a bench or a box, we can definitely do that. Uh, I'm going to let you guys kind of float around the room when we do the hands-on stuff. So we'll be, you'll have a chance to use the box. So if I'm teaching someone to squat, uh, you know, let's, let me grab Mel again. I want you to pretend like you don't know how to squat. Okay? It's not hard. Okay. Just, just, sit, just sit, yeah. So right now she's like not really in like a great thing position, right? So if she had a lot of weight on her back. The other thing when we're using a box too, like so she has the ability to really lean back here. Now if I took the box away, she wouldn't have balance here. So I need to get her like over her mid foot. So what's nice about doing a bottoms up progression, she's supported here, so I can get her in a good position before she even starts the movement. A lot of times athletes will they'll mess up the position on the way down. So if I could start them in a good position here, correct them, and then I could just have them stand up. It's a lot easier, in my opinion, to work with a beginner like that. So what I'm gonna do is, first thing I'm gonna do is grab her hands, and I'm just gonna get her way over her mid foot. So that's the first thing. She's gonna stay seated on the box. I pull your chest up a little bit. I want you to hold this position, don't move here. Squeeze here. Push into my fingers, harder, harder. Hold that, don't move. So you can see her position has drastically changed in just a few seconds. And now she's supported here, so she can hold that position. And if I wanted to, I could take the box away, and she's in a pretty darn good position and just relax. Good. So I'm going to show that one more time, for the coaches out there again. So I'm going to just have her reach, reach, keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching. Squeeze here. Push here. Harder. Spread your groin. Stand up. Now I want you to reverse the motion. Now, and relax. Good. So I want you to pretend when I'm now when you squat again, I want you to like lose your tension or just okay. So good. I want you to have your shoulders come up first. Okay, that wasn't actually that bad, but I'm this one. <laughs> so, but what was the difference in that second rep? She lost some tension. She kind of collapsed the bottom a little bit. So another, this is just a good, um, some people learn more visually, some people learn more auditory, some people learn more uh, kinesthetic, so we're kind of, we want to kind of hit different learning styles. I know some people like say it's, it's kind of a myth or it's debunked, but I, I believe that we want to like teach people in as many different ways as, as we can. Some people might pick up on an auditory cue, some people might pick up on a demo, some people, I, like, I think the kinesthetic is going to be helpful for everybody, so helping them feel those positions are going to be very, very effective. So a good auditory cue that I, this is a, I stole from a Joe Kim, uh, you say it's, it's a cloud technique. So some people say eggshells, this is, this is a bunch of Joe DeFranco has a scale analogy. So the cloud technique basically means when we're, talking, when we're doing a box squat or any type of drill when we're trying to keep tension, we want to go into the cloud, but we don't want to go through the cloud. So I'm going to say that again, we want to go into the cloud, but not through the cloud. So we want to pretend like this box is a cloud. We don't want to crash into it and plop onto it. We want to keep tension. Another cue you could say is there's eggshells in the box, you don't want to crack the eggshells. All right. Uh, then Joe DeFranco says, if let's say you know Mel's 150 pounds, I want you to pretend there's a scale in the box, and I want the scale to register 75 pounds, something like that. So just something, one of those cues will probably click with them, and they'll understand not to just crash in the box. We don't want to see that. Because that's going to lead to problems when we take the box away. So let's reach out again. Get the weight over your midfoot. I want your shoulders to come up first. Stand up through your heels. Reverse the motion. Pretend you're going to go into the cloud, but not through the cloud. Keep tension. Drive up. And reverse. And drive up. Very good. Okay. So that would be a good way to teach the squat. Okay. You can do the same thing with a push-up. You can do the same. And then eventually what I would do is take the box away, and now we can start working from the top down. And then I would start with pauses. Why would I start with a pause versus a dynamic version? What's the benefit of, of, of for the coaches? I want the coaches to answer. 
Raise your hand. Why would I want to start with a pause versus doing a dynamic version first? Static or static at the end. Yeah, so what's the benefit of having them in a static position? Just build like that isometric stabilization kind of strength. So nothing from a learning standpoint, that's great. I like that, but from a strength standpoint, uh, from a, um, a coaching standpoint, learning standpoint. Okay, so like step by step, just one. Mm -hmm. Good, one so step let's just uh, do like a crappy uh, fast squat. Reps done, reps done, reps done. I don't really have time to correct her. Right, right, right. So if I pause her, pause and stay in a crappy position. All right, I want you to lift your chest up a little bit. I want you to shove your knees out a little bit. I actually have the ability to like coach her up a little bit in that <clears> position <throat> because she's holding that position. And I can see what's going on a little bit easier. Good, now come on. So that's a really, so that's why I like to start movements. A progression is, is speed, a progression, a progression is time under tension. So if I'm doing a deadlift, same thing. If I'm just kind of going through it and ripping through them, oh, slow down. Pause here, hold that. Pause here. Get your chest up a little bit. Hold that. All right, finish. So it allows me to coach them a little easier if I can hold those positions. And they're going to feel, oh, that, that doesn't really feel so good when I'm pausing here like this. Oh, that doesn't really feel so good when I'm pausing here like this. So they're going to feel like that's like not like so great. That's kind of crummy. So it gives them a chance to learn their body. They're not just cranking through them. Okay? So that would be why I would start with a pause first for all the lifts. And this is also why I advocate, if you are not a competitive lifter, I do think that you should still pause your benches. What's gonna be easier on your shoulder? <laughs> or, this is gonna be a lot easier on your shoulder. It's gonna be a lot better for, so I still recommend, if I had to pick one or the other, and if you're not a competitive lifter, I'd probably do like pause squats or like box squats like all the time if you're not gonna, you know, if there's no like, if there's no competition, if there's no competition left, just do what's better for your body, do what's gonna be better for like your joints, right? Um, so now we're gonna go through, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of exa other examples of the bottoms up method, and then we'll go through the RMT stuff, so let's get a push up position. So same thing, if I'm starting here, what do you see with a lot of kids? They're you know doing this and doing this, but if I start her, I want you to get your glutes engaged, and I might not say that for her, she knows what I mean, I'm not gonna maybe say that to like a 12 year old kid, but I might say, you know, squeeze your butt, Push your belly into the floor, engage your back, only to tear the floor apart. Again, I taught her all these things in the morning so she understands these concepts already. So it's a, it's a progression. I don't, she understands how to engage her lats. She understands how to engage her trunk. And I just want you to push the floor away. Good. Now come back down. Now do like a band push up or like your, your uh, come all the way down. Just have your chest come up first. So why would that happen? What's not engaged here? So she needs to, so that's a, that's a, that's a core, that's a stability issue, not necessarily a strength issue. Come back down. So I'm going to instruct her, okay, I want the first thing to come up is your, your glutes. I want you to lead with your glutes. I want you to lead with your hips. And then, that, then this will kind of come up more evenly. So squeeze your glutes, air into the belly, and I want your hips to come up first. Okay, a little better. Okay, come back down. And then eventually I can start to do more dynamic reps. Again, still starting with a pause, and then I can start from the, the, the top down after that. You can do the same thing with a split squat or reverse lunge. Start from here versus starting from here. Because we'll, oh, how far do I put my foot? Where do I put my foot? And if anyone's ever tried to coach a lunge or somebody, it's like, where do I, where do I go? <laughs> you know? So if I start them here, I can organize their body in a way to make them successful and I can just have them to stand up when you're leading with your head. Then it's a lot easier to do that than versus like, where do I put my foot? So the bottoms up method, thank you, is very effective for that. Good. 